The End Written and narrated by James McNamara It was a sunny morning in the small town. People were going about their daily chores. A smell of freshly baked bread wafted through the air. The baker just having put out some bread for sale. You could hear many people chopping wood and the clucking of chickens. Even though it was early in the morning, the inn was always already bursting with laughter and the sound of merry men and women. Horses trotted on the cobbles past with carriages and reeler, bringing in supplies for the construction of a new storeroom, along with the repair of the local church roof, having been, having been damaged in the recent storm. It was a hard-working life for the many people who lived there, but it kept their bellies full with enough left over for feast every so often. There was, however, a discontent among them, having heard whispers of a sinister force coming their way. A horn rang out. The town went silent, apart from the chickens. People poked their heads out of their windows, and the inn emptied into the street. A man came in running from the local fields into the town center, panting for breath. The paladin, who was a retired adventurer and acted as town guard captain, made his way through the crowd and spoke to the man. What's on the horizon, he asked. And the words barely escaping his mouth between breaths. There were gasps from the crowd and whispers relaying the message back to the people who didn't hear. The paladin drew his sword and shouted, To arms! It was echoed throughout the town. People scrambled, rushed to their houses. And the carriage was unloaded. The wood that would have been used for the church and roof and the storeroom was now being turned into blockades and boarding up houses, the local blacksmiths thus handing out weapons. The town guard opened up the armory, suiting as many people as they could. His son at his side. Father, what is the end? The paladin looked down at his son, who was only sixteen, barely a man, and his friend, who stood near him, who he had fought so many battles alongside, and then at the people who were scrambling to ready themselves. They had lives, family. And these unlucky few would have everything gone by nightfall. He looked at his son and said, They're an evil band of twisted men with souls as black as coal. They ravage the countryside, killing everyone in their path. They take no prisoner and leave nothing in ash in their wake. The color had drained from Paladin's face. An hour later on the horizon, they saw the end. He marched towards them. The men got up from the ground, picking up their shields and notching their arrows. It'd be a fine day for the end to come, a man said, gazing at the horde approached. The paladin turned to this man and to the men around him. We are the last! The only stand before they come! Come and destroy our lands and our homes and our families! Let us take this time to reflect on the, our time on this earth. The joyous and the sad. Remember of everything of your lives and take that with you when you draw your swords on this day. Use your life to thrust your swords into the heart of the enemy, which so heartlessly takes it from us. We have a choice today. They will take no prisoners and have no discrepancy between man, woman, or child. But we have a choice. Either we give them everything or we fight. Fight for our lives. Let them know fear the mights of our swords. He called to the men. The men looked at him. They unsheathed their swords. It was their day to make them pay for what they had done to others. This was their day to fight. To defend the most precious things they had. Their lives. Those two hundred or so men and women stood there, waited for the enemy to march up. They did not falter. They held the line. An evil horn sounded. A war roar came from the end. The people stood there in blatant defiance. This were their home. All they had. And they would die to defend it. Paladin picked up his horn and blew it one last time. <laughs> <laughs>
A loud, echoing sound erupted from it, sending chills down the spines of everyone on the other side. It gave those villagers newfound courage to meet the end. The horde had ended, and the paladin lifted his sword into the air. Charge! He yelled. The man ran, and the end stood there and watched as two hundred men and women slammed into their ranks. The paladin was first into battle, quickly followed by the other. They fought for their homes and their family. They fought for their right to peace. The paladin fought with vigor, but eventually came exhausted. When he thought he could not raise his sword one more time, a grave sight fell at his head that of a sword entering into his dear son's body. He let out a fable cry, one of vengeance and defiance, as his son slumped to the ground. This spurred him into a blind rage, killing many of the army of the end. <laughs> the others fell to where it was only the paladin and his close friends left, defiantly keeping the battle ongoing until he felt something pierce his chest. He looked down to see an arrow. He fell to his knees. Everything early. Everything went blurry. Noise faded. And all he could smell was the lingering scent of freshly baked bread. And all went back black for the paladin. The battle was lost. And those people who fought have achieved the right to peace on the soil that was once theirs. And the end kept marching on, chanting, everybody falls, everybody falls.